Uh, first things first, as usual, if you'd like to write a comment, write any question, I know some people aren't comfortable standing up asking questions, it's okay. Uh, we got comment cards at the front, feel free to drop them down, Dave will collect those and we'll answer those at the moment. Uh, a couple notes uh, for opening remarks here. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, recognize the DES and the Fire Department Police Department uh, for the great work at the beginning of the month. On the 6th of January, we hosted uh, Christmas in January, and so it was a fantastic event. Uh, about 2,000 uh, dependents out there with about $35,000 worth of gifts given away free. Uh, so uh, we had generous benefactors from Corona uh, that the, the police department or the DES has worked closely with for many, uh, many years. And this time we brought it all the way up here and timed it just perfectly to do the event. So if you didn't get to participate in it, feel free to uh, look for it next year. We're going to try to do it again. I will comment because I had a number of people come up to me and say, who do we thank for this? Who do we thank? And I posted it on the Facebook page, the Fort Hood Connections Facebook page. So if you have folks out there that want to write a thank you note, especially if you got a kid that wants to write a thank you note, I know that uh, the, uh, the Leathermans, who were the ones that uh, uh, put that together for us, the, the donations and the collection, and our DES and Sergeant Major O'Brien brought that up. Um, would very much appreciate a thank you note. Uh, it, uh, it's really a, a great thing that they do. Hey, second thing I want to highlight, uh, we've implemented, uh, the commanding general has uh, approved a uh, change to the uniform policy at the gymnasiums, and so uh, we've put that out on the MTC webpage. One of the more systemic com comments I had was, hey, why do I have to be in uniform between 6.30 and 7.30? I'm on a comp today. I am a doctor. And I work shifts, or a nurse, or I'm a uh, cop, and I work shifts, or I'm an ops group, and I get, you know, one night out of the box or whatnot to come back, and I want to do PT. Why do I have to be in PT uniform? And so the commanding general has changed that policy. And uh, so the, the expectation, though, is that if you're doing unit organized PT, you're expected to be in uniform. Leaders will enforce that, not my gym staff. And so uh, you organize in a squad, team, platoon, company, you're in the appropriate duty uniform for the day. And if you happen to do that at the gyms, you're the ones making sure that's right. Now what my gym staff will continue to enforce, of course, is if it's a health issue. This month is are based on what the rotation can support. Again, number one mission uh, out here is, of course, to train our brigade combat teams. Uh, but we did have a great box tour at the, uh, excuse me, on the 14th of this month. And so we're going to continue to do that. Mark your calendars. Uh, the 29th of April is the tentative date for the next box tour. And I just want to reiterate to the group, we continue to have no-shows, okay? But every single time I get folks say, hey, I wasn't one of the first 80 to sign up, but I really want to come. And I tell them, show up, okay? We have going two groups. One at 8.30, one at 10 o'clock in the PX parking lot, and we consistently have no shows. And a life takes over, I got it. Uh, your child has a fever that morning. Uh, probably sometimes just didn't feel like getting up. Uh, I don't know, and that's okay. But I encourage people, we want to reach as much of the community as possible because it's always a very popular event. Uh, the ladies that participate in that love it. The kids that participate in that love it. And so again, the rules is 12 and up. Uh, kids are allowed to participate in those, spouses and brats box tours. So just mark the calendar for the 29th. Something else we're looking to do, uh, the Chief of Staff uh, and I were talking the other day. We have, uh, for many times, told our staffs, the civilian staffs, hey, you need to go out and experience the box tour as well. You worked here for a fill in the blank number of years. You know, some people, 30 plus years. And they've never seen the box. They always come right to this location and never make it out. And so on the 28th of April, we're going to be doing an NTC employees box tour. And so our DA civilians uh, that have never gotten a chance to experience that, that Friday the 28th, we're going to do it the same model as the spouse's box tour, and it's going to be open to the public. We'll start advertising that probably here in mid-February uh, for first come, first serve sign up. And we're going to try to do that on a periodic basis. Um, and then the uh, last comment I want to make before we go into announcements. Um, okay. I spoke about BAH at the beginning of the month. I'm not going to belabor the point this time, but what I will point out is the income or the revenue generator from this 10% increase in BAH is going to start flowing in right now. Okay? 
And so uh, my housing project uh, director uh, talked to her about making sure that we provide periodic updates of what that increase of income is doing for this community, okay? Because we're going to get after uh, trying to make an impact in this community, particularly where I had the have-nots. You heard me talk about it last month. We've got 14 neighborhoods, seven that I call the haves, and seven that I call the have-nots. The Milcon built housing that has never been refurbished or uh, substantially upgraded. And so we're going to try to do that. And so uh, each month during the town hall and the newsletters, uh, the housing project is going to show you some samples of some of the things they're doing. For example, playground upgrades, uh, remodeling in some of the houses. Because the reality is, is there is no way with that 10% increase to suddenly and instantaneously remodel the 17 or seven neighborhoods. But you got to see, we got to be honest with you. You got to see what we're doing to try to improve the quality of our life here. It's going to take time uh, to dig ourselves out of this hole. But hopefully, you appreciate and can see what we're doing to try to make a difference here in this community. Okay. And the last thing I want to talk about is uh, the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Next slide. Okay. And so, on the 11th of February, we will be hosting, uh, at the moment, an unspecified number of Vietnam vets. We're still waiting for the headcount to come in. Last year was 508 veterans from all across Southwest United States, even some as far as Pennsylvania, as well as 400 plus family members. And so this is our chance, our generation's chance, to recognize that generation. There's a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a bond uh, between our generations. And we've come home to the thanks and praise of a grateful nation, as soldiers should, from our wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And so uh, we think it's appropriate that the Vietnam veterans have got a very different welcome home uh, get recognized. And so the president gave, by executive order, a three-year period from 2015 to 2017 that he wanted every military installation to attempt to do something. Well, Fort Irwin has really led the way on this. We've actually been doing something like this for nine years. Uh, but uh, the scale of what we've done uh, in recent years is larger than it's ever been. And so, just for context, uh, we'll meet the veterans at the Painted Rocks. We'll have a, a bunch of uh, motorcyclists. We think we're going to have in excess of about 150 motorcyclists from Patriot Guard riders and other veterans groups that will lead. We've got LMTVs, uh, the Calvet bus, and uh, some classic cars that are participating in a parade that's going to start from the Painted Rock come right down through, uh, down Irwin Road, and then left on Inner Loop, past the Star Wars building, past the Headquarters building, Commissary BX, uh, right down to the intersection of Barstow Road and Inner Loop. And we have asked the community to line the road up and down Inner Loop from Irwin Road to Barstow Road uh, so that we can give them the welcome home parade they probably never got. And so it's just a neat opportunity. Inside the tent, we're going to feed the veterans uh, a meal, and again, that's by invitation only. We've assigned to the unit commanders uh, responsibility for some table hosts uh, and some of the leadership in there to honor these Vietnam veterans and their families. Uh, but outside, we don't want the community to just do the parade and, and wander off. we got more for you. So outside at the Blue Track, we've got a car show. Uh, classic cars, we think in excess of 40 uh, right now, could be more like 50. We're still working on those numbers. So we're going to have a car show that MWR is going to put on at the Blue Track with some vendors and some activities uh, going on there. So that while the, the lunch and the speakers, guest speakers, are going on in the tent uh, with the Commanding General and Command Sergeant Major, uh, then well, the community can continue to have fun there. And then at 1400, uh, we're going to have Blue Oyster Cult uh, perform. And that is open to the public. Uh, so if you haven't heard of Blue Oyster Cult, uh, you're probably younger than the Vietnam era generation. That's okay. Okay. But, uh, it, you know, uh, I had heard of them, they, their classic song, their biggest hit is The Reaper. And if you ever watched the Vietnam era movie, you've probably heard The Reaper. And so the idea is that we wanted a band that still is performing. They've been performing 70s, 80s, 90s, and right up till now, uh, that might be heard of, but that the Vietnam veterans have heard of. And so they're going to put on a concert with an opening act uh, right before that. And that is open to the public. As usual, we'll have uh, food, beer, and other opportunities on the field, uh, so we uh, we encourage you to participate. Next one. My last comment before I turn it over to Stacy. Uh, literally on the fourth of January at the last town hall, I talked about the air show being on the tenth, and the next day we went out and had to take a hard look at the uh, airfield. 
Uh, this time it's Mother Nature that got us, okay? The airfield is underwater, and it's probably going to be underwater for a while. Uh, the experts that have been there for about 14 to 16 years said, yeah, that'll dry up sometime in March, maybe first week of April. And so what we can't do, we can't land a C-17 tactical Air Force aircraft out there, much less a vintage B-24 from World War II flown by a civilian who owns that aircraft, okay? And so we've had to postpone that due to that uh, weather, but what we're looking to do is nest it on April 15th with the Month of Military Child Spring Flame Earth Day celebration that we do every spring. And so my apologies if you had already made plans to come out there on the 10th. Uh, the 10th will just be a, a day of no activity. And some units, as I understand it, made it a day of no work as well, and that's great too. So, okay, without further ado, hold the stage. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just one second. Just about the concert, just so that I can They need to bring chairs. Yeah, but there's never going to be enough chairs for everybody. There'll be some seating around, like some uh, fest tables and stuff like that, like we did this last summer. Food and their beer for sale. Mm -hmm. Can they bring the food? Sure. So they can bring their own if they want. Yes. But there is now, now, I can't let them bring alcoholic beverages. Okay, they're not alcohol. Yeah. You can bring water, you can bring soda if you want to, that's fine. But I am not allowed to let you bring alcohol onto the field. You gotta buy your alcohol there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. Good question. Okay. Stacy. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, just a reminder, the housing office is going to be closed for President's Day on February 20th. We will still have the maintenance technician on duty. The trash pickup for that Monday holiday will be on Tuesday. And I just want to remind everybody, you need to secure your trash and recycle bins um, every day, but also especially when it's windy. If it's your trash day, try to put them out just right before you leave and try to They are your responsibilities, so please keep them secured as much as you can. Keep the lids closed. Let's keep the trash from blowing all over. Now, Stacy, we do, if we have a gathered trash can back at the office, we do send a notice to the, the tenant saying, hey, your trash can's been located, come get it. Yes, if it's one that has a, an address on it, we know, yes. Um, now, with the, uh, the bulk pickups, I know some people have moved here and they have an old refrigerator or something, they put it out for a bulk pickup. Please don't do that. We cannot collect those because of the EPA regulations on the, um, the uh, refrigerant disposal. So if you have that, something like that, you're going to have to make arrangements, take it off base. Um, we just can't do it. I'm sorry about that. And if you have any questions about housing or policies or maintenance, anything, please call us. I see a lot on Facebook. Call us. We'll talk to you. We'll answer your questions to the best of our knowledge. And if it's something having to do with the Army side of it, we can refer you to RCI, and they can help you as well. And like the Colonel mentioned, we do have some pictures of before and after. Unfortunately, all we've gotten to do so far is flooring. We have gone with three different types of flooring for the vinyl. We have um, uh, a wood plank, a wood vinyl plank, and then just a, a sheet vinyl that looks like wood planking. And then also we've switched our carpet to just a little bit darker color. So you can see some of the before and afters. We're trying to take out everywhere that we can eliminate the carpet except in bedrooms. And so you can see the difference in uh, kind of a family room there and the kitchen changing out the uh, floors there. Next slide. Uh, a living room and then the kind of a family room. I'm, I'm not sure what everybody refers to them. But you can see what the difference it makes. And yes, we do still have a lot of houses with the BCT tile that the, the Army put in a long time ago. It is really, it, it will last forever. So that's why there's still so much of it in. Next slide. And you can see some of the, uh, um, I guess again, a, a living room, I'm not sure, but you can see the difference. You can see some of the spots in the, the carpet, just traffic areas and um, furniture areas. And we're going to hopefully prevent that. Next slide. And again, you have the staining, uh, you know, in and out through traffic. With Okay, and, and people have a right to their opinions. I really do believe that. Okay, I, I gave some replies back there as we did a little banter out there, uh, but people are entitled to their opinions. We've got to prove that we're up for this. But what 
I also got to work on the community and make sure they understand the foxhole we're digging our way out of, okay? Uh, simply put, the previous management company made a lot of choices over a 13-year period that were not always the best choices, okay? We bought materials that were not going to last, okay? We bought flooring that was not going to last. We had Milcon original flooring for appliances that were not going to uh, do very well. Fundamentally, to lay it out there, it's a, a person's home is their kingdom, okay, their castle. And our goal here is to make it as nice as possible, but it's got to be realistic as well. And so for context, there's urban legend out there that the Army has a policy that the carpets will be replaced every fill-in-the-blank number of years. I've heard some people say three. I don't know what planet they lived on when that happened. Uh, it's not three. It's not eight. It's not 16. It's not 30. There is no Army policy directing the housing projects that they will replace flooring at a certain regular interval. Okay. Uh, fundamentally, there's a, a guideline saying you should consider at roughly a 10 year interval. Okay. But it's not written as in orders. Fundamentally, what the housing project has to do is they manage our homes is take a look at the flooring. We do not replace flooring when a tenant's in the home. We replace it in between tenants. That's a fact of life. However, however, if there's a tripping or safety hazard, then that's a different matter. And so this particular lady had vinyl in her kitchen that was cutting her husband's feet when he walked around barefoot. Okay, we gotta fix that. We gotta fix that. And so what I've tried to reiterate is, hey, if you're not happy with the answer you get from the maintenance team, because sometimes they're living under a paradigm of the limited funding we've had, come in and talk to Adam. Come in and talk to Stacy. Come in and talk to Sandy. Sandy here, Key, Sandy Key here is my director for RCI. She's the government oversight of the project. And if you need to, come talk to me, okay? Our goal is to meet every reasonable request. But I also will say, sometimes we're gonna say no. Some people have a stain that was by the last tenant, but the rest of the carpet is good. And I don't mean a vile health code type stain. I mean, somebody decided to spray paint uh, a bench in their house and overspray onto the floor. My wife is laughing because that would, that's what I did in my first home. Fortunately, I own that home. But I had to replace the carpet. It was, uh, yeah, it was a learning experience for Taylor as a young lieutenant, not my brightest moment. But my point being is sometimes you'll have stains on the flooring that will be left there because the carpet's still safe and healthy. It is just like when you're limited on funds and somebody gains your car door, okay? You may not be willing to spend the $500 deductible because nobody left a note, you can't charge their insurance to get that car door fixed. Some things are cosmetic, okay? But things that are life, health, and safety, we will always address. And things, as much as we can to improve the quality of life, that's what we're going to be working on now, now that we're digging our way up. We have to pay our debt service first. That's the $550 million bond that brought 900 new homes and refurbished 500 homes on this post uh, since 2004. That debt service has to be paid. And that comes out of our BAHs. The other thing that comes out of the BAH, roads upkeep, grounds upkeep, uh, repair of signs, uh, repair of uh, fauna in the neighborhoods. That comes out of all over BH. So I have a few people that are like, BH, I pay fill in the blank number, $1,400. Okay, first of all, no you don't, the government pays $1,400. There's not a single person on this post that pays out of their base pay for their housing. The government pays for that. But that amount does not go exclusively into the homes. But what we wanna do, what we wanna do is hear the concerns because if this lady had not been persistent, if she had not gotten with me on Facebook, because she gave up like nine months ago when she thought something had been filed or work order had been filed, and it never made it to us, okay? She just gave up, but don't give up, okay? Come see my people. We'll take care of you. Any reasonable request will be met. Okay, thank you, Stacey. I just want to mention one more thing that I failed to put on the slide. We are going to have a pay and go workshop on February 22nd at 10 a.m. It will be at uh, 5108 Alpha Sweetwater over in Desert Winds. That's the area behind the plastic store. But we will get that out on Facebook and email somebody that's interested. And whether or not you're clearing, it's, it's good information to have. Um, but please join us for that and we'll get it out to you. Thank you. I'll cover the uh, boss issues today as well as uh, upcoming events. So currently uh, we have February 2nd. The 11th boss will be supporting the Vietnam Veterans 50 commemorative event with a food booth 
and Crab Stable. There will also be a Boss Watermelon Eating Contest held, by, held at the Blue Track at 12 p.m. That ought to be fun. Volunteers are needed to help set up for that as well as tear down and cook. And then the final event on uh, RSOI 2 will be uh, the 14th. Boss will be holding uh, their monthly meeting at the Warrior Zone. We would like to have all your unit reps there if you could, so that we can continue to uh, drive all of this program and keep it going in the right direction. So thank you. That's all I have. Good morning, everyone. I am Danielle from the MWR Marketing Office. I wanted to start by saying next month is uh, Valentine's Day on February 14th, so that means you're free to sample all the chocolates you want. And in order to help with your chocolate cravings, Samuel Adams is actually hosting National Chocolate Lovers Month. So you can check out things like chocolate fried ice cream, lava cake, juice, and more. So head over to Samuel Adams. Our next two events are Family Bowling Night and Single Soldier Game Night. They are both on or you can do so the day of the event and they will have a contest for best street bike and best cruiser. Next slide, please. From our community recreation team, we have the Dirty Hearts Powder 5K run going on on February 4th at 8 a.m. If you register by February 2nd, they are offering an extra bag of colored powder for the runners, so you have more powder to hit people with. The next two events, the dodgeball tournament and the paintball unit team building events, again, are part of Resiliency Week. You can see the flyer up there. I know you probably can't read it, but we do have a resiliency flyer in the back, so you can check out all of the activities we have going on for that week. You can register with your units, or you can call Freedom for Outdoor Recreation um, for your questions. Now, I'll just add to this, the, we currently, commanders, sergeant majors, sergeant major, we have uh, four teams signed up for the dodgeball tournament. We need four more. I've got one tentative out there, and so we're looking for an 18 dodgeball tournament. I know the rotation has been what has focused most people, but we're looking for uh, four more teams uh, to be able to do that program. This is what the commanders all agreed, and Command Sergeant Major all agreed would be uh, a good resiliency, burn off some steam. If you can duck a wrench, you can duck a ball sort of mentality. So, okay, I encourage you to do that. And then paintball, to reiterate, uh, in support of the activities from the 6th to the 9th, the idea is that if you uh, would like to have a unit event, company level or platoon level, uh, call the number that's on that slide and they can schedule an opportunity. We are, uh, unit funds are available. We're also looking to see if, uh, unit MWR funds, we're also looking to see if uh, we can help offset some of the costs. Uh, the Warrior Adventure request, uh, request for funding was uh, this proof because we've already used our allotment for you. Okay? All right, keep going. Next, we have a flea market coming up on February 18th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. It is going to be at Mojave Arts and Gifts, and I would encourage you to call ahead and reserve your table. The price is $10 for a table. We also have a Spring into Fitness Triathlon coming up. It's not until March 4th, but they do have early registration happening until February 11th, and late registration goes until February 21st. And I'd just like to put it out there, we were asked on our Facebook page about um, possibly extending pool hours to help people train. Um, and unfortunately, we can't do that, but the gym staff has moved over some bikes to the Oasis Pool to help facilitate with your triathlon um, preparations. So I hope you take advantage of that. Next slide, please. So who here is going to the Shockwave Super Bowl party? Oh, wrong answer, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's the, actually the only Super Bowl party going on at Port Irwin. I don't count people's houses. So it's uh, February 5th, obviously. It kicks off at 11 a.m. And USAA, one of our sponsors for our MWR events and programs, um, graciously sent us some of the official Super Bowl programs. So we just got those in the other day. And if you show up to Shockwave, then you can get one. But if you don't, you don't get one. So next slide, please. Again, you've already kind of touched on this. This is the car show and concert that we also have coming up on February 11th. The car show starts at 10 a.m. and the concert with Blue Oyster Colt kicks off at 2 p.m. at Army Field. Um, if you are interested in finding out about the kind of cars that are going to be available, you can check our erwin.armymwr.com webpage. We have all um, the things that will be happening there to include the Boss Watermelon Eating Contest. Next slide, please. And later in the night, on February 11th, we are having live music by Felice Lizé. She actually comes out here quite often, so she's got kind of a boozy folk 
5 going on. She'll be there at 7.30 p.m. at Samuel Adams Brew House, and it is free entry. If you don't have any questions for me, that's all from MWR. Okay, what's up? How can I help you? I was wondering, um, who updates the website for, like, say, the movie theater? Um, they update it the movie theater falls under APHES, so I, if you have an answer. <laughs> yeah, APHES does, and they uh, try to put out two weeks worth, if not a full month's worth. Are you noticing some latency on that? Okay. Instead of the robot. Okay. I have not I have Well, right, but then. I heard about that when I got home. We checked the website right right there in the lobby and still said La La Land. Understood. What I will do is I will check with AFIS and hold them accountable for keeping it updated. Okay? okay. Any more questions from WR? They're not here. Hi, right, thank you. Good morning, I'm Chad Morales, uh, representing Chapel Gross. Uh, there have been no significant changes to our release support calendar of events throughout the week. If you have no questions, I'll go to the next slide. These are some significant events that we have coming up. Just by way of reminder, next week during Resiliency Week, uh, we are sponsoring the uh, uh, Romance Murder Resiliency Training that uh, Chapel Coleman with 11th ACR is kind of spearheading for the RSO. Uh, if you have any questions for that, please see your unit chaplain to get you signed up. We still have some slots available. Uh, we're trying to get those slots filled, and we are opening it up to DA civilians as well. So if you are a civilian and would like to attend this, please uh, get with a, a chaplain, and we'll be glad to get you signed up to get you registered for this event. There's a couple other things happening in March are uh, some strong bonds uh, programs that are happening. First, at the beginning of the month, the 3rd through the 5th, uh, for uh, Garrison and for Operations Group. And then at the end of the month, we've got uh, medical activity and dental activity. We've got their strong bonds uh, events coming up. Just to kind of give you uh, a heads up, we are also working to get some additional funding for strong bonds programs through MCOM to try to create two more programs uh, sometime in the third quarter. So we will definitely keep everyone informed of, of that as we get uh, some feedback from MCOM and from the chapter's office for strong bonds. We're going to try to target single parents and single soldiers with the next two. So that'll kind of give you an idea of where we're trying to focus our energies with that. And also, lastly, I would like to uh, emphasize that we are starting our preparation for Vacation Bible School. That will be 5 through 9 June. If you would like to volunteer, please uh, contact us at the Religious Support Office at Center Chapel. We'll definitely utilize your help for this. There's going to be some transitions in the staffing to the PCS moves, so we're definitely looking for volunteers. So if you'd like to do that, please uh, see us, and we'll be glad to do that. And the last slide we have is just kind of one more uh, slide for the uh, Refresh the Romance training that we're going to be doing next week again. It's going to be at night at the, uh, I believe it's the Sam Adams Club, uh, starting around 1800. So uh, if you want to attend that and haven't signed up, please see your unit chaplain. If you're a TA civilian as well, see the, the unit chaplain that you're attached to. We'll be glad to make sure that you get registered for that. I believe Chaplain Coleman is here. He's over here. If you have any additional questions for that, he can answer that. And so if you have no questions for me, that concludes my time. Thank you. Yes? Child care that night. Yes, we are providing child care as well. Uh, your unit chaplain will have the specific details of how that's going to work, but we are providing child care as well. But they have to be enrolled. Yes. So please ensure that if you're not already enrolled, you go get them enrolled uh, with CYS. And they have to be at least 12 months. It is. I, I can address that. Ch child watch is limited, and at this moment on our trackers, it is pretty near full. So you'll need to check specifically with your unit chaplain for that meeting. Are there any other questions? Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Conklin, the Installation Equal Opportunity Advisor. Tomorrow, we will be hosting the African American Black History Month. Um, our guest speaker is Miss Dawn Lewis. She'll also be uh, singing. She was from the TV show A Different World, who in the 90s was a pretty big show. Um, also, there will be a food sampling uh, meet a uh, food sampling sort of here by the volunteer uh, 92 Gulf Cooks from 11th ACR 916th. So please tomorrow, if, if you enjoy the food, uh, thank our, our cooks who are doing that on their uh, personal time. Also, DFAC 2 in conjunction, so if you get a little bite of food here, by all means, DFAC 1 and 2 are both uh, providing an ethnic 
um, kind of soul food vibe uh, food at both defects. So I know defect two is doing spare ribs, fried catfish, crab cakes, uh, baked macaroni and cheese, collard greens, things like that. Also March 8th, we'll have another town hall, so I'll be advertising for that. But March 8th, we're gonna have Miss Sue Raber, the CEO and founder of Welcome Home Troops, will be our guest speaker for Women's History Month. So, any questions? Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, uh, also wanna highlight that on the 14th of uh, February, uh, the exchange will be offering opportunities for you to come in and get your photos with Cupid. Uh, they'll have uh, various food sampling and opportunities, as well as gift baskets uh, to recognize. Yeah, I know, I got some people saying, okay, Fat baby, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. If, you know, we had uh, some selectees for the Santa costume. I'm not sure who they're picking to dress up like Cupid, but we'll figure that out. And so, at any rate, again, part of AP's efforts to uh, stay connected with the community and provide more than just sales items, but also uh, opportunities for. Uh, oh, sorry, I just played Cupid. Okay, I got it. Okay, next slide. Oh, this time. Okay. <laughs> casino night is near, and tickets are already on sale. Our Roaring Twenties Casino Night will be held on March 4th at San Madden from 5 to 10 p.m. Tickets are $25 per person. We will have opportunity drawings, live and silent auctions, and even a jail that you can put your Pretty great success. Units, FRGs, coffee groups, schools, businesses, and any other willing organization or group. The proceeds from our event will directly benefit the Fort Worth community and our scholarship and welfare fund. If you plan on donating, please see me after the town hall or email Spring Fundraiser at mcscftirwin.org or donations at mc, mcscftirwin.org. Next slide, please. And what we'll do is, uh, commanders, command sergeants, majors, I know you've got FRGs that want to participate in that. I'll get a flyer and email it out to the command channel so you can push it down. Uh, so yeah, the email addresses are, are scrolled down in seconds. So so you know who to coordinate with for your donations. We, we cover those. Go ahead, Latrice. Hello, I'm Latrice. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to remind you all about the community grant. It is open. And like Yannette said, all of the proceeds from our casino night, from um, the thrift store, they actually directly affect the community grants and the scholarships. So everything we collect goes right back into the Fort Irwin community. Um, the deadline for the community grant is March 7th. Um, I know it seems like a, a far away, but I can say when I hear people saying like, oh, we're showing up on this and here, and, and the units need things, just apply. It's literally a really short application. Just put it in. You can usually get three answers. It's gonna be yes, no, or a different amount. But for the effort that you put in and you can get money out, <laughs> I think it's worth it. Um, also, the scholarship. Um, I will tell you all, like I said before, last year we only had five applicants. All five did get um, awarded grant, um, awarded scholarships. Thus far, I have no applications, no scholarship applications. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, <do have> time. <laughs> you all have time. The deadline is April 4th, but this has to be mailed in. It's a lot of pieces to it. People have to get recommendations. That's what I'm hearing takes the longest, um, but I would not wait till April 1st to start sending things in. Um, any questions about the community grants for scholarships before I turn it back over to you, Next slide. All right, so join us for a cupcake war on February 23rd from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at Sam Adams. The cost for our luncheon is $10, and our community outreach will be the Fort Irwin Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Do visit our website or Facebook page for the list of items needed, and please RSVP between February 2nd and February 18th on our website. Thank you. All right, before they hit around the corner, uh, no slides from MedAct today, but a couple things I want to share with you. Uh, my name is Dr. Dopera. So the first is that our automated call distribution system is being revamped, and this is a process that's taken months and months to get done. You, I would have thought it would easier. But if, if folks had gotten used to dialing in and pressing 142 and they got to where they needed to go, it may not be the case now. They're about 80% of the way through working with Verizon to try and make it simpler. 
and also improve the answering, the, the ability for people to leave messages as well. So, so that is almost done and should improve things for patients. Uh, flu shots, the staff wanted me to make sure I shared with you that February, March are the peak season as far as nationwide, as far as influenza. Uh, so again, military, we know we've got folks covered at this point, but a lot of dependents are not. So still encourage people to, to, to get those flu shots. Uh, they can walk into Mary Walker anytime, uh, does not require an appointment. Uh, just for the general, you know, everybody's knowledge, uh, the hospital was set to open in July in the new hospital. We've shifted that to September uh, due to some construction concerns. Um, so we're still hoping we'll get it done there. If we're set to PCS this summer, all you have to do is call your branch manager and extend a year. Oh, and then you'll be able to go to the hospital. So, uh, a couple dates to share. You know, the week of uh, the resiliency week that the post is taking part in, uh, the hospital is doing some of the things, but generally it's not going to impact our services. So it should be uh, pretty much, except for maybe that Thursday the 9th, all the other days will be normal services, everything is open, uh, a little bit of restriction on the 9th while we try and do some focus training as far as some of the resiliency things that week. But the rest of the week should be the same. Uh, the uh, uh, President's Day weekend, that Friday the 17th, uh, you know, we will be standing down most of the outpatient services for a training holiday. And then the 20th, the federal holiday, the outpatient services will be closed. But of course, the ER urgent care remains open uh, all the time in, in all the inpatient mission. And then the 17th of, uh, of March, which is a ways away, is also going to be used as a training holiday for the MEDAC. Uh, hiring freeze is not impacting us at this time. We've got 60-something uh, hiring actions in the hopper right now. And of course, they've all stopped. Uh, you know, we will keep the community aware if that does start to impact some of our services, but at this time, it's not. And then the last thing to hit on is our, our JOES, or our Joint Outpatient Experience Survey, which is, again, something that the medic gets, uh, the hospital gets graded on from MedCom, uh, and it is actually tied to funding that we get from MedCom as well. We just want to make sure folks do fill those out when they come to the house or they come in the email. Uh, you know, please don't just hit delete. I know everybody gets over-surveyed from 10 million different directions. Uh, this is extremely important to us in order to make sure that we maintain our funding. Any questions from the medical side of the house? If not, I turn over to Colonel Taylor. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, uh, one, I'll go ahead and jump on that one as well. Marty, come, or Colonel Perrick commented on the uh, hiring freeze. It is going to impact some of the services we have on post. And so, uh, simply put, uh, the food service or uh, gain time in the strike zone is going to be delayed indefinitely because I can't hire the staff at this point in time. Uh, we're working on things with Installation Management Command and HR, or excuse me, HQDA about uh, what exceptions might be approvable. But the, at this point, effective 22 January, uh, by presidential executive order, the hiring freeze is implemented. Uh, another area that may be impacted is, uh, we, we really thought we are in a home stretch to opening uh, a couple more rooms uh, at the CDC. Um, and unfortunately, that's gonna be delayed uh, at this point in time for that. Uh, and then lastly, for command service majors in the room, uh, we were aspiring to returning some of your borrowed military manpower in the front gate as well, and that's going to be delayed pending the hiring freeze. We're working on requests for exceptions on that, and we'll keep the uh, command and the community informed. Uh, the bowling alley will continue to be open, uh, and it will continue to be free to bring in food uh, and uh, non-alcoholic beverages, and alcoholic beverages will continue to be sold there, uh, but I don't have the staff to, to run the kitchen at this point in time. Okay? A uh, long-range calendar, just look at the next uh, couple months. The one thing I will add into that, and I'll just hit a few things that uh, were not covered in a slide in a brief. Uh, first of all, coffee with a cop. Uh, part of our, uh, our police's effort to answer your questions, answer the community's questions. So uh, coffee with the cop will be held on the 1st of February tomorrow uh, at the uh, food court. No, excuse me, Burger King. Uh, Burger King Popeye's area, and so you're welcome to come in there and ask whatever questions you may have, talk with them, give suggestions, etc. Second, I'd like to highlight on the 10th of February, we have the uh, Red Cross uh, blood drive here, right in this room, uh, on the uh, 10th, starting at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and going till complete, targeting about 1,400, 1,500. So uh, we encourage all to participate in that if you're not in one of the screened out categories, uh, like our commanding general is right now, being so fresh out of Afghanistan. So. Uh, Barstow Community Awards is on the 27th of February. Uh, we'll recognize uh, a number of folks and we'll get advertisements up if you want to participate in that. Next slide. Uh, the AER campaign uh, will kick off in March. Again, it's uh, how soldiers and DA civilians care for soldiers and DA civilians. So we encourage you to think about that and what you want to make your contribution. 
Uh, town hall meeting next month uh, will not occur in February. We just happen to have a wait week and a, a push. As you know, we, we live by the rotational schedule, so the next BRD4 is on the 7th of March, and that's when our next town hall will be. Uh, Sergeant Conklin already alluded to the Women's History Month celebration. That will be on the 8th, uh, BRD5. And then uh, I also put in there, and we're going to get a flyer up for you on the marquees. Uh, there are a lot of folks by word of mouth that knew it last year, but I think there wasn't enough uh, command uh, emphasis from my level pushing out uh, about the Cobalt 400 NASCAR race. We've got a lot of NASCAR fans out there, and uh, Operation Welcome Home Troops uh, gets significant donations of tickets. And so uh, we had in excess of 2,000 tickets last year, and only a, a fraction of those taken. And so uh, we're going to get the word out so you can plan, but on March 12th uh, is the Cobalt 400 in Las Vegas at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, uh, just uh, adjacent to and near to Nellis Air Force Base. And so we encourage you to mark your calendars if you're interested in that, and that'll be, there's an electronic sign-up for that. There's an email that you can sign up for that, uh, and then the idea is that you'll pick up your tickets. Um, distributed on the Friday prior to that event. That 12th is a Sunday uh, in a comp weekend. Um, and then spring cleanup, uh, just a highlight. Hey, before I turn it over to any comments or questions from the commanders and then to the uh, command team for the NTC, I also want to reiterate the NTC app is out there. Uh, I sort of had an observation that some people forget that it's there. It's a resource for information. We encourage you to use it. Uh, continue to have the the uh, slide up on the marquee, as well as the slide in the kiosk on the NTC webpage. It's a tool for your use, and so, particularly for your newcomers. Commanders, I'd ask that you emphasize that, uh, because sometimes it can be a little confusing on this post where buildings are. So we have building 342 right next to building 712. Don't know why, it's just the way it's been built. And so sometimes it's hard to find things. Well, the app will literally draw you a blue line if you have your location uh, turned on to your phone or your tablet, and you can get right to it. And so we encourage you to use that. Policies, uh, highlights, events coming up, uh, flyers, the top eight, and we'll try to keep that current. And then also, uh, there's an opportunity for me to use that tool when I need community-wide help. And so August 6th last year, we had a power outage. I literally sat on my couch in my blacked out house uh, using my little knee feet and uh, trying to coordinate with the community about what all was out. And I found out what was out a lot faster on this uh, announcement as well as the uh, Facebook page that I would send in a cop around to every neighborhood. And more importantly, I could get the word out. It's, it's sort of my giant voice until the Army funds giant voice here. And so if we have a requirement uh, to get word out to the community as quickly as possible, this is one of the best tools out there on your phone. It works on Apple and Android devices. So we encourage you to reinitiate to uh, share that word. It's really easy, QR code reader, etc. Okay? Okay, Commanders, Sergeant Major, do you have any comments you'd like to make? Okay. Uh, do I have any questions out there from the group? Yes? Sir, is there any way we can look into getting some uh, potential certification at the swimming pool for like unit level swim instructors? Like myself, I have a bunch of profile uh, soldiers from like impact musculoskeletal type of injuries. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we sent them out there to go walk in the mornings during PT and stuff like that. However, I do know that the swim pool is kind of like prioritized for the military in the mornings, but a lot of my folks who have those injuries are very proficient at swimming. Okay. And so I would like to be able to certify maybe quarterly uh, some of my squad leaders, some officers, or whatever the case may be, and have them actually take those soldiers to the <coughs> swim pool, teach them how to swim, and then give them some other op opportunities to go out there and uh, get out their fitness and body weight. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. See me after, let me get your name, and I'll uh, put you in touch with folks so they can, they can help you with that. I've got no problem with that. Yes, sir. Fitness is a, a total thing, and swimming is one of the best ways to stay fit. Okay, do you have any other questions from the group in here? Yes, ma'am. I have several people that have asked for the um, spouse's box tour um, for us to maybe plan an event that would include children under 12. I know that that event that right now is restricted based off of the design of it, yeah. but in the future, maybe with one of these big events that you guys are doing, maybe do some sort of open house to bring families out there. Just okay, <coughs> sure. 
I'll talk to the commander about it. We'll see what we can design. A again, the reason why heretofore it's been 12 and up is because of what they see out there. It can be, it can be disturbing to a young kid. And so, but uh, we can always retool them a little bit. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Thanks, Jackie. Any other questions from the group? Yes, ma'am. Sir, I don't have a question. I just wanted to make sure that the group knows that the tax center is open. And those soldiers um, have gotten, the soldiers who are preparing your taxes have gotten over 100 hours of VITA tax training. So don't waste your money going to other places. It's free at the tax center. Last year, I think we served about over, or over 1,000 um, clients, saving about $209,000 in tax preparation fees and getting back over almost $2 million in refunds. So they know what they're doing. Don't waste your money. Schedule an appointment and get your... There's quite a few soldiers working on, I think at least four soldiers working on uh, individual appointments at a time. So We've got a, a flyer up on the marquee. Again, our goal is to save the community money. It's a great program. Any other questions from the group? Do we have any questions written in? Okay. All right. Sir, over you and something. So I was trying to quickly pin in a, a question for the internet, but uh, that's all right. We'll do without this uh, this week. Hey, um, so two million bucks. I mean, that is that is huge. I mean, this is not a large community. So uh, don't listen to the commercials you hear on TV. Listen to the ones that we're telling you. That's one is free chicken, and apparently they can squeeze out all the money that is owed to you back. So that's uh, that's pretty huge. Um, hey, just a couple of uh, announcements and some information for you. We just conducted our soldier and NCO of the quarter yesterday. Uh, both uh, the winners of the NCO and the soldier from 916th, um, a Sergeant Barbosa and a uh, Specialist Jordan. Great, uh, great Americans. Um, what I'll tell you about that, though, is that there, there were some spouses there at the events. If we can accommodate it and safe, there are more than welcome to come and watch their soldiers compete. And it was pretty neat to, you know, see a spouse cheering somebody on, pretty neat. Um, they, uh, one thing I've been hearing uh, as I go around formations is a, the uh, commander in chief, if you're in uniform and you're a soldier, his name is President Trump. You, you're, he's in our chain of command, you can no longer call him, Mr. Trump, Donald Trump. His name is President Trump. That's a title. Just as you would call the CG a general, it's the same thing. We are, you can't do it anymore. For the families, it's your call. Just saying, as soldiers, it's one of the things that we have to do. Um, need some help with uh, just some awareness. So the OCTs out of Ops Group, uh, because of some of the things that are happening, some of the battle rhythms have changed, need some help with the family just to monitor and make sure they're okay because they're probably way more tired now than they typically are in the past. And we just need help to keep eyes on them to make sure we are not pushing on the gas pedal too hard and that we have feedback mechanisms to say, hey, you're wore out and so the chain of command can address it so we can uh, integrate breaks as necessary. But it's it's tough. What they're doing is tough and greatly appreciated as is shared by some of the other units here on camp. Uh, I have to say about, uh, you know, keep our community clean. It's cold out there. It doesn't mean you can't run out, pick up a piece of trash, and then run back inside. The running will actually get you warm also, <laughs> from what I heard. And um, to assist our DES and to keep our community, our homes, and our uh, children safe, hey, we need to be vigilant. Uh, and that means being aware of patterns of life that are occurring within your neighborhoods. And if there's something that's outside the norm, outside the parameters of what is legal, it is our job to contact DES or the appropriate services to report that. Because somebody doing drugs or being drunk or anything like that in our neighborhoods poses a risk to all of us. I like to have, you know, kids go outside. I like that. And I like for it to be a safe environment for them. We're in the world's largest gated community, so we've got to help police some of that up. And stop speed, I'll tell you, I, I drive a silver car, and it is going to go the speed limit. And I don't care if you're behind me, you can get as close as you want to. But I, I'm one of those people, I follow the speed limit. If it's 25, I'm doing 25. I stop at stop signs, I just, 
I just thought it was common practice. I don't know how you can catch up to me if I'm doing the speed limit. <laughs> and that's in neighborhoods. Hey, plan accordingly. Take time. Don't speed. It's a small community. There's kids. There's all kinds of people out and about. And we, want, we don't want to discourage that. We want to encourage that. Don't speed, please. It's the safety thing. It's a discipline thing. Sergeant's major got a problem with it. As should you. Uh, last thing I'll say is, uh, hey, there's some travel advisories going on in America. You just got to be aware of that. People go on emergency leave and unplanned, unscheduled leave, and as well as scheduled leave. Just make sure changes of command are involved and that we're helping them look at the risk at our leaving airport and the landing and departing airport in return. Because there's some things going on in, in, in this country that we just need to be aware of. Uh, we want our soldiers to be safe. And enjoy the Super Bowl. Yep. No, Thanks. No affiliation to the TV. No affiliation to the TV. <laughs> but the, uh, you might not be getting Facebook comments, but I am getting Facebook comments here from my wife. And so uh, this is interesting on this Facebook Live. You're getting them too. So hey, just, just for one, I, I truly appreciate all you all coming here. Uh, and those watching on, on Facebook Live here, I mean, this is our community, right? We are responsible for making a change and, and doing the things that we want to. So I truly appreciate you all being here um, and, and, and coming to this or, or watching it on Facebook Live. Hey, so, you know, so the garrison commander kind of talked about PT there. You know, the weather is getting better. It's 65 degrees, it's out and sunny. And one of the great opportunities about living in the National Training Center, besides it being windy, uh, at times is that the, the, the weather and so you know I just want to applaud MWR you know they, they do these monthly runs walks uh, some of you all have participated in those before I applaud it. there's some troop commanders and, and command teams that have had their troops out there or their companies out there for that I applaud you for, for getting out and, and doing that just to, to get it's it's many many different things besides just the physical activity that you get out of that but it's just a way of supporting your community, and I appreciate the I appreciate the input in, in getting on that one. I'm not too sure about this powder run though. The, uh, <laughs> that, that's coming up. Um, hey, do we have photos for the improvements on the flooring on uh, on the internet? Okay, I, I, I would just look. I mean, this is great. I mean, it's always good to show what uh, how we're improving, how we're getting better, uh, as that's what we're striving for. And so I would just ask that uh, that you do that. As I know, many people have questions on that uh, as they're coming in here to the National Training Center. Uh, and so one of the questions I got was, again, the scholarship money. I mean, this is, this is a great opportunity that I hope that we are uh, passing out to all uh, individuals that are eligible for this. I mean, this is a program that uh, you know, I've been personally involved with since 2008. Uh, on rotation that are, that are out here at the National Training Center. It's just a great opportunity and a wonderful uh, group of, of organizations that get together to donate this money so kids have opportunities that they might not have or to help out with costs that are associated with that. So, um, again, I, I, you said nobody has applied for that yet? Unbelievable. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then, then the last thing that I got, look, I, I will volunteer to be a cupcake judge. <laughs> on, the, on the 23rd, I will, uh, I will, I will, I'm a giver, I will be more than happy to, uh, to be a cupcake judge. Well, he says you have to pay a casino night. I will, I will do that, so, okay. Alright, I, any questions of myself or the Sergeant Major? Thanks. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, appreciate it.